Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are here on the beautiful grounds of the Marcus Point Baptist Church, where our Congressman Jeff Miller has chosen to have a town hall meeting tonight. Uh, don't know what we might encounter here. It does look like it's going to be a rather large crowd, so uh, hope you enjoy it. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jerry Cooey. I'm Deborah Nelson. Thanks for joining us. And uh, as you can see, um, well, Deborah, here, here's, here's my take on it. Okay. Uh, there's, there's an election for the House of Representatives every two years. Right. And I will, I will, uh, kind of make a comparison in that that, that Congressman Miller is. It's kind of like the, the movie Groundhog Day, except on the Groundhog Day, he comes out every year, but Congressman Miller only comes out every two years because that's the only time that, that he feels the need to make a... Uh, to look for a shadow? Public <laughs> exactly. Now, just for fun, and I, and I wish we'd had a video camera at that one, the last time that he came out of his hole to... Uh, to um, spend time with the constituents was in 08 and the hot topic was immigration. Yes, that and, was very entertaining. <laughs> and uh, folks at that meeting, there was 19 people that spoke in front of me. All 19 of them as they were walking towards the podium, they had their finger out saying, you better get illegal immigration under control. It was a spirited crowd this time too. It was a spirited crowd. Uh, I, you know, in in all fairness, I think it's sad that we only see our representative every two years. Uh, I see the same tired rhetoric over and over and over. Well, he uh, last time he came that I saw him was for the health care bill. Right. We brought the big stack of it, and and not everyone was allowed to speak that time. This time, everybody who wanted to was allowed to say something. So right. that that was nice. It was nice that we could all say something. Well, it 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 just uh, you know. And, and folks, if you've watched Santa Rosa Week TV any amount of time, I'll, I'll just go ahead and give my speech early uh, concerning Congressman Jeff Miller. Um, I'll take you back to the most horrible vote that has ever been taken, except the one he just took. Uh, 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 the, the House of Representatives was tied in a vote. Uh, they stopped voting on the floor, and Congressman Miller changed his vote. He had voted against CAFTA. CAFTA is the sequel to NAFTA, Central right. American Free Trade. The Central America Free Trade Agreement. Yeah. The very reason why we don't even have mm -hmm. enough jobs to help our returning war veterans to help them get a job, and why very few people have a job and, there's, and, and people are dropping out, was because of a vote Congressman Miller took, the CAFTA vote. He was the single change, the, the one person who changed his vote that caused CAFTA to be enacted. Now, when you look at his legislative prowess, you will find that um, uh, until recently, um, items that he had gotten through the legislature was the renaming of seven government buildings. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, you, you, know you, sh you should be very proud that your congressman, note the sarcasm, that his, his greatest claim to fame is that he participated in renaming the Judge Arno building in Escambia County. Wow, I'm excited. That's really important. Uh, 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 of course, I, I said until recently because while they were debating raising the tax or the, the debt ceiling limit, they took time out to name uh, four or five other post offices in the process. Now, those weren't bills that he had introduced, but I'm, I'm sure he participated. So, so his, his, in we don't know for sure. In, in, a, in 11 years, his, his uh, uh, largest contribution has been uh, renaming buildings in, uh, and the, CAFTA. in CAFTA. But oh, the reason that there was 300 people in the room at the Marcus Point Baptist Church was because they were upset over the debt ceiling vote. Okay, Now, 
and 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 you'll see some of my comments that I made, but but I, but I want to say them again. Uh, Congressman Miller had the nerve to stand up in front of people, and he said that 60 percent of the people that called his office w wanted him to vote for a debt ceiling increase. And I just don't believe it. I'm sorry. Because every poll that I looked at, most of the polls were uh, at least 60% against it. I saw one poll that was 97%. It's hard to believe it. in this area that people well, call this a it. It's uh, hard to believe that. Well, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, there's there's no way, and no the, and how. The other problem is that particular bill was so bad with foisting everything, all the authority that it does off of that uh, super committee. They're going right. to have to either find $1.5 trillion in cuts over the next 10 years or there's a there's a whole slew of automatic cuts that are going to kick in that's going to right. include Medicare and some well, other things. Well, look, look, it's laughable. I, we, we, we had a limited amount of time. I engaged him. I engaged him for a little while. But, uh, you know, one person did ask a question that I wanted to ask, and that was, where, where do we find in the Constitution where where uh, six people are in control right. of, the, that was a good question. of of yeah. our destiny. Yeah. You know, uh, you have you have sub subjugated the entire government to six people. Yeah. Well, you know, wh 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 where where's that at? Right. You know, uh, uh, certainly there there were people uh, in the audience, and I don't blame them for being upset. Many of our military folks. Uh, there was one fellow. Um, joined the military in 1949 with a promise of free health care for the rest of his life. Yes, and now they're screwing him over. Well, well we, we, we all know that uh, uh, we haven't kept that promise. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I was never blessed in going in the military. I almost went out, out of high school. For those brave people who, who fight and die for our freedoms, when we make a promise to them, we need to keep those promises. And, um, you know, one of the things that I always like in folks, I, I've listened to, to Miller many, many times. He, he, he uses uh, 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 us and they a lot, you know, like, like he has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I assume that somebody has schooled him. That's a, that's a rhetorical trick. Uh, the other thing he does is he, he continually refers to Social Security as an entitlement, right? which it is not an entitlement. And, and I spoke, right. and I corrected him on that. He had it listed in a pie chart as being almost the same amount of expenditure as the defense budget. And then he had a little tiny slice for creditors. Actually, Social Security is a creditor um, expense because they've taken the money that we've paid out of our paychecks. Right. Congress has taken that and they've used it for other things. So they borrowed from us. Exactly. So that we're creditors to them. That's got nothing to do with the general fund. It doesn't come out of the general fund. It comes out of payroll taxes. It's paid for itself since Ronald Reagan established right. a trust fund. And right. it's very um, it's very misleading to refer to it as an entitlement. Oh, and then right. to stick it up there like it's part of the regular general fund budget when it is not. Right. But well, here, here's the funny part. when when uh, And he started uh, with showing some pie charts and whatnot. He referred to it as an entitlement. He said it was an entitlement. When my TV partner Deborah Nelson got finished with him, he was using quotations. They, the General Accounting Office, calls it mm -hmm. an entitlement. He was trying to weasel out of that one. But you know, I think he appreciated me speaking because I took the heat off him <laughs> for for just a little bit when they were booing me. Yeah. Not about the social security. They were bullying me because I pointed out that the rich don't pay their fair share right, right. in taxes. Yeah, so, so it didn't go over well. No, no, it did not go over well. And and uh, I, you know, here here's the interesting thing, folks. De Deborah got up and she was true to her mantra, and uh, she didn't back down. There was even conservative Republicans that walked by her at the close of the meeting and said, even though I disagree with everything you said, that's true. I will have to give you credit for standing up there and saying it. <laughs> well, I mean, they were, all, they were all very nice. When I sat back down, they were all very nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they have fun, I guess, with the booing. Right. But what happened was I sat with some ladies, and they had charts, 
and they were trying to show me the error of my ways. Yeah. And then I talked to another guy who was, um, you know, we, we were going back and forth well, a little I, you bit. Know, I, and, and, they want to help. And I feel for them because I've spent a, you have. several years trying to you get, have. You really get, have. get you to understand. And I'll just, I just want to pull, because I, I didn't get a chance to get a word in edgewise. We now have the largest gap between the, the rich and the middle class. I, I would agree with that. It, wider than the Depression, right before the Great Depression in the, in the, right. in the 20s and 30s even. Widest gap ever. Right. Huge gap. Well, you know. And, and that's not healthy. That's money tied over the top. I, that's not flowing down. I, I can't say this enough. The polls across the United States of America said do not raise the debt ceiling. Your congressman, Jeff Miller, voted to raise the debt ceiling, folks. And 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 and, and I hope you agree with me. I I don't I don't care if the chairman of the Fed said you ought to do it. I don't care if that little boy who's wet behind the ears who still needs to be wearing a, a bib Geithner over there. Uh, I, I don't care if if he says it needs to be done. What I know, what I believe that the American people wanted to see on that was, no, we're not raising the debt ceiling anymore. And the, and the chintzy deal that they took in this, and folks, we've already seen, I, I like John Boehner, you know, I, he gives pretty good speeches, but every deal that he's been associated with when the GAO does an accounting of it, it's, it's one-tenth of, of yeah. what they think. Then one of the points that I made to Congressman Miller is every Congress kicks the can down the road. Now, this is a 10-year deal. Ten, you know, Miller stood up in front of us and said, well, this is 10 years. We're going to correct this problem. And I pointed out to him, said, you know, every other congressman that I've ever stood in front of said the same thing. In two or three years down the road, a new Congress changes the, changes the rules. Of course, again. we did have a surplus under Clinton, and, well, we, and we had a higher tax rate. We, we did. And all I wanted to point out, and I couldn't get a word in, was that much of, not all, but much of the deficit and the debt is due to uh, two wars which they did not pay for. They borrowed for both of those wars. Right. You, want, you can argue whether the wars were a good idea, but they did borrow for, they shouldn't have borrowed for those wars, and they're very expensive. Right. And they cut, they cut the, the Bush tax cuts that mostly benefited the rich, have cut an enormous amount of revenues, and we've also got this spiral now from the depression that we're in, where there's fewer revenues coming into the government, Correct. more people are requiring assistance, and it's just a downward spiral. And at some point, they're going to have to inject more cash into the system. Yeah. We and we've got so much cash at the top right now. We've got so much wealth that's just sitting there. They're not creating jobs. Um, they're they're not carrying their their fair share. They're just sitting on it. It's well, got to go back into the system and, in order to and, pump it and back And some up. and some of the problems with that is also the uncertainty of the times we live in. They don't know they don't know. I mean, Barack Obama said today that he's going to be giving a speech in September, right, where he's talking about raising revenue, which that means more taxes. Right. And uh look, I you know, I I will say this, I'm very proud of the conservative Republicans uh, that I know and and those across the United States of America. I'm very proud of the Tea Party members, whatever party they might be a part of. If it weren't for the Tea Party members raising cane over this issue, uh, nothing would have occurred. There, we, we would already be ta ha having another tarp and, and more money thrown away. So we're heading in the right direction, but I'll tell you this, folks. In a historic election in 2010, we, we the people sent 115 new faces out of 535. And uh, in the 2012 election, we need to send, well, the, the most that we can send is we, we, we should replace the entire House of Representatives with the exception of those who voted against raising the debt ceiling. And all 33 members of the Senate who are up for election need to be defeated because the Senate is an absolute joke anymore. But the bottom line That's is... That's your humble opinion. Uh, uh, I, okay. It's my humble opinion and a lot of people's humble opinion. Uh, the, uh, the, the bottom line in all of this, we've had Congressman Miller for 11 years. Uh, he only comes out of his hole every two years. You never see him uh, in between. Uh, he read off of his, his little play card uh, 
last night, and 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 I and I'll leave. Well, he's al he's always got the same tired talking points, right. it, and it, it comes down to well, we're we're in a depression because um, um, because businesses are afraid to invest because of all the taxes and regulations that are coming down on them. It's always it, right. they, they don't want to. Well, it's always an excuse. They're afraid of taxes. It's a, well, it's always an excuse. No matter what it is, right. it's always an excuse. Right, but I mean, he's, he never he, he just. He never wants to discuss anything in any kind of complex way. But you, you ask any business person, small business person, what do you want? They want customers. Right. They want people to walk into their store with money to spend. They don't care if they get taxed a little extra. They're not complaining about regulations. Their problem right. is there's no customers. Right. There's no customers because people have no money because right. they're broke. That's got nothing to do with taxes and regulations. Yeah. But he just, you know, it's the same type well, of points ta ta talking points over and over and over. Uh, you know, I. I I just, you know, I, I just think he's not been a very good. I, if, if he really wanted to represent us, how come we never see him on any of the other programs on TV? You know, he only sticks his head out of the hole every two years for election. But I want to leave you with one closing thought, and you're going to see this in the videotape. And I and 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 I think this is an important point, folks. This was at the Marcus Point Baptist Church where this occurred. And I want you to pay close attention to what your congressman said, not once, but twice, while he was standing in a church building. I think it was uncalled for. I think it was unnecessary. And it's my belief he should be very ashamed of himself for what he said. So with that, with that said, enjoy the uh, video. I'm Jerry Cooey. I'm Deborah Nelson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Let me tell you something. Nothing made me matter in the entire debate than Admiral Mullins standing there telling our troops that they weren't going to pay what he knew damn well that they were going to get paid. For the President of the United States to stand up and tell people, I can't promise you you're going to get your Social Security payment was a lie. Because the President knew damn well that he was going to make those Social Security payments and he was trying to use political maneuvering as we work through this process, Jerry, I guess you're <laughs> Jerry Cooey from... Wait a minute. Mike? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, from Milton, Florida, uh, you, you want to hear what we think, so here goes. I, I, I think Congress has been kicking the can down the road for a long time. With that said, you've been there. I, I hear words like we and they. Well, we out here in the audience don't get a vote in all of this. It's you, and along with your fellow congressmen. You live in a fantasy world. Everybody gets automatic raise every year. Raise your hand. Okay. You want to? You want to do? Just wait a minute. Just wait a minute, Jerry. Just wait a minute, Jerry. You threw something out. Let me finish. Just wait. Just wait. He will. He knows. He knows me well enough. He'll have a chance to finish. We don't get automatic pay raises. Really? Okay. Nope, you vote for them. No. We did not get a pay raise this year. We did not get a pay raise last year. We have to vote it. We have to. You're, we have to vote it down. But we did not get an automatic. Pay. You're absolutely right. One of the first bills that I I put into the hopper was to do away with the automatic pay increase. Now, have it passed. But it doesn't matter. You still got to put it forward. You still have to put it forward. All right. Uh, Next. Uh, you, you know, you're not in the same retirement plan. I'm in the exact same retirement plan every other federal employee is. In fact, interestingly enough, my retirement that I get from the federal government is less than what a typical federal employee would be getting. So, again, that's not correct, but that's okay. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, my main point We do pay into Social Security, because that's probably going to be the next thing you said. We do pay into Social Security the same rate that everybody pays into. We do pay for our health insurance. We have FEHB, the same federal health benefits at every other. So, again, that's fine. But get your back straight when you're going to come up and you're going to attack it. I'm not attacking. I'll just point out a few things. But they're wrong. Well, according to you, they're wrong. Uh, I, I, 
I, I see a lot of evidence that there's a difference of opinion. The internet is not always but, right. But, 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 but let's, get to the, let's get to the main point here. The main point is, and, 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 and I've heard what you said, and one of your staff members said the same thing, that the calls coming in for you to vote for was higher than the vote against the debt ceiling. Every poll that I looked at was as, some of them was 60 uh, to vote against it. The raise, and I saw one poll that was 97 percent was against raising debt ceiling. Once again, your vote is kicking the can down the road, and you're putting our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. And, and, and look, in all fairness, not just you, every congressman that's ever stood before a group of people, we got a 10 year plan, we got a five year plan. And I will guarantee you that two to three years from now, that plan is completely forgotten. You do not have an argument for me at all, Jerry. Wait, all right? You are absolutely correct. But what I want to ask you, you, okay, in the last week, all right, when we got to the point that something had to happen, all right, the easy vote for me would have been to vote against the bill. That would have been an easy, but wait a minute. That, that, that would have been, been the right vote. vote. No, it was not. That was the right it vote. was not the right vote. But I'm not going to criticize my colleagues that voted against the bill because they voted their convictions as well. What would you have done when we had the debt ceiling? What, how would you have handled it? As a patriot of this country, I am prepared to tell Wall Street to drop dead. I'm prepared to tell the Federal Reserve to drop dead. I am ready to take it any way I need to. to get this but you can't do that. No, you you're can't not. Do that. You can raise the taxes. You can't do I have never voted to raise a tax. We ma should raise well, taxes. That's what's no, we shouldn't. No, we should. We should not raise taxes. <laughs> We do not have a revenue problem, we have a spending problem. And I think the majority of the citizens of the United States are ready. And, and, and I will tell you that the Tea Party and the conservative folks in America replaced 115 people in Washington in 2010. It wasn't enough. So hang on tight. Social Security, when it was first established, you were not supposed to live long enough to get a benefit. The numbers were against you. We are now living a whole lot longer, so there are more people drawing out of the system, and we've got money going in. And it was never designed to be a lockbox, as we've heard talk in campaigns in the past, whereby there would always be money there. It was designed to be a large pool of dollars that the federal government could reach into and pull out of. Yeah, they, That's they, Social they Security. That. So what's happening now is we have to look at a way to make sure that Social Security and Medicare are going to be solvent for recipients in the future. That's why you hear people talking about it, and I am one of those that says for those of us who are under the age of 55 that are somewhat away from retirement, whatever uh, people are doing out there, we may have to raise the retirement age. Go from 65 to 67, 60, whatever that number happens to be, 67 to 70, we're gonna have to look at moving that forward because we are living a whole lot longer uh, than was originally anticipated. Uh, yes, I'm Deborah Nelson. I'm, I chair of the Santa Rosa County Democratic Executive Committee. I just, I appreciate you letting everybody have a chance to speak tonight. Um, but first, I, I do want to clarify uh, to you that Social Security is not an entitlement. It has its own dedicated funding source, the payroll tax. It has uh, paid for itself. That's why I said it's called an entitlement. It, it's not an entitlement. It's um, called an entitlement. You put it on the wrong spot, your high chart. It's actually uh, paid for itself and run, it, and run it a surplus since Ronald Reagan. Um, established a trust fund uh, back in the 80s. Uh, Roll it, it back to the pie chart. Where, where it should have been, where you actually should have had it was under creditors because you, in Congress, have borrowed from that money. And so you actually 
the people who are receiving Social Security payments are actually creditors of the U.S. government. They um, they pay for that out of their, their, their paychecks. That's not that's yeah that's not money that came from the general fund. It, it is not an entitlement. Okay, but it didn't just so you know it didn't come from the Republican Party. It didn't okay. come from the Democrat Party. It came from the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO. Okay. That's that's how they score it. I got you. Okay. It's it's right. not an entitlement. Um, and that's why I said it was an entitlement. I understand. Thank you. Uh, the next thing is I would just uh, point out that much of the current debt, not all of it, because there's been a lot of spending uh, last year, but much of the current debt <clears throat> is the result of um, some the bailouts, which I don't believe one American citizen actually wanted to see happen, the result of two expensive wars that were mounted without any way to pay for them, taxes being lowered, um, and other uh, what I would call irresponsible Republican spending. Get to the question. What I would call irresponsible Republican spending uh, that mostly that, that, that mostly ended up benefiting the rich. And I would just uh, I would just remind you that uh, the rich have not been paying their fair share, and it's time for. Oh, them. Oh, Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. 